Oh my gosh, you guys, how do you explain yourself after declaring martial law on your country? If you still haven't heard, South Korea went under martial law for about six hours. So don't worry, it's over. President Yoon, on a late Tuesday night, declared martial law try to shut down the country under military rule. And when you hear martial law in South Korea, you immediately think around the world, North Korea invasion or battle or something. But in reality, you brought us all out to the yard over your wife's milkshake? Oh, it was just a Tuesday night in Korea. Imagine after Taco Tuesday and three skinny margaritas in, you hear that your country is under martial law. Yoon suk yeol on Tuesday, Korea time, 10.23 p.m., made a broadcast saying that he's going to put the country under martial law. Now, usually in this type of situation, when you have a martial law type of thing going on, there's a buildup or there are signs or signals. What exactly is martial law used for? It involves the temporary substitution of military authority for civilian rule. So essentially, you're going to let the military run your country because there is some sort of crisis. Usually it is because of war, rebellion, or natural disaster. So when martial law is in effect, the military command has the most amount of power over any other politician or your mayor or governor. It is supposed to unify command in a crisis. President Yoon tried to sneak this under rebellion. The last time there was martial law in Korea was 1979 when President Park chung hee was assassinated by his own intelligence director. But that was when the country was in chaos without a leader. Now, under normal situations, then you have the line of succession, so you don't need to go to martial law right away. But you would in situations where you can't rely on consensus. Consensus is political power. So if no one's going to listen to the governor or the mayor because it's just way too much chaos, but they will listen to a military command because those are the two types of power. Violence essentially is the real, when you unwrap what military power is, it's violence Power. So it's force, like actual physical force that can threaten your livelihood or your life, or consensus, which is political power, and you elect the leaders. So in the time of su like su supreme chaos, where people might not even listen or recognize a, a chain of command in terms of consent or political leadership, you know, you revert to martial law. So this is like extreme, extreme, rare situations where in some ways, like, you know, you could kind of feel like this is not right. And we hope that this is temporary, but you can see why it's necessary. People are still scratching their heads right now, even though, yes, we'll get into it. But thank goodness for Korea's civil society and also the institutions around Korea that responded right away and blocked this maneuver because in a manipulated format of martial law, it's essentially to become a dictator, to take power away from the current leader by cozying up it to the military. So you always got to watch your military generals and leaders. Like if you're in a pseudo democracy where the consent like the political power is not that established where the public would not have an uprising the way they did in Korea you got to keep your eyes on on the military people because they are the ones that usually will overthrow the leader and then try to be the leader themselves, which is exactly what happened in 1979 in Korea when they had last had martial law. It was extended in 1980. And guess what? General Chun Doo Hwan, 
who said he wasn't going to do it, but did it and became president like a dictator for eight years until 1988. We had our fabulous Seoul Summer Olympics. It's supposed to usher in the era of modernity. So ever since then, there has been no martial law. And then he, <laughs> John Doohan asked everybody, vote for my friend, my fellow general, <laughs> No Teru, and that was 88 to 92. That was supposed to be the first democratically elected president, but people thought that was more of a transition. So 1992 is seen as really kind of the first real democratic election in South Korea. But the confusing part about this martial law declaration is that, like I said, usually you're trying to overthrow the current president by using the military force and then the excuse that, oh, we got to, there's chaos in the nation. So we have to put all of the power in the military. But Yoon suk yeol is the president. And so he declared martial law like, who's, who is he going to overthrow? He is the president. So this is why this was so confusing in the sense of, okay, it would make more sense if it really were, was like a shady, nefarious plot to overthrow the president and somebody's trying to, you know, take the power away from the president under false pretenses. But he is the president, so he's not overthrowing himself. But he <laughs> declared martial law unexpectedly, but we could see the build up if you actually confront and face the reason, the actual reason. I'll give you a preview because nobody else is going to say this. Nobody else is going to say this outright, but everybody's been dancing around it. And then the timeline, if you look at the timeline, it makes sense. So who did he do this for? His wife, his wife. He's trying to be the Romeo. She may have been known as Julie in the past, but she certainly ain't no Juliet. But this is like a Romeo and Juliet situation gone amok and making a mockery of South Korea's democracy. Although I'm going to couch this not for the sake of being balanced, but because this is a very nuanced situation. So let's go into what exactly happened. 1023, President Yoon on a Tuesday night declared martial law. People are like, what? And with that, the military comes in and shuts. He wanted to shut down the National Assembly and the media. That's the scary part. That's the dictator part. And that's probably that's part of, part of the plotation. And so only the National Assembly are in Korea, the version of Congress, but instead of two houses, it's only one, they can vote to cancel martial law to create some sort of checks and balances in the South Korean democracy. But if you block the building and don't let the National Assembly member politicians go in to vote, then you can essentially cut off that power source. And so immediately, because by now... A South Korean knows a coup when they see it, before the cacao talk has even transmitted fully. So they went out to the streets. They were helping the politicians go into the National Assembly building, even grandmas and grandpas, you know, using that kind of cultural force of age. You know, this is when people use their people power, and it was very impressive and everybody's got their favorite spot on the street anyway for a protest. So it was quick mobilization. And the National Assembly members were able to go in with enough people, 190, to vote to cancel the martial law. And they did that at 101 a.m. So they're saying like, oh, officially this martial law lasted for about two and a half hours. However, in practice, Yoon suk I guess uh, when he had to wake up at 427 a.m., he declared himself also lifting martial law. So it was a very scary six hours. And 
it, it did not succeed because of a lot of immediate people protest and you got to nip it in the bud. Once there are more people who log lob onto this situation and feel like it's an inevitable snowball, you're going to get like the same people, not all, not a hundred percent of the protesters, but a percentage of the people who did go out to protest, they, for their own self-preservation, eventually at some certain point, everybody has to go along with it because under martial law, if you do not obey, it's not just, oh, I'm going to write you a ticket. They're going to hurt you or kill you and so or jail you and so this is like a very serious situation and it hasn't been that long since korean people have actually witnessed it firsthand it's not out of the population's uh, shared history where you can only really experience it through a history book there are people who actually lived through this many many times and I mean, as an aside, I think everybody actually has some sort of situation of martial law in their everyday lives in Korea. So on the one hand, people be like, shouldn't I mean, wouldn't they be sort of a little bit more used to this or just kind of go along with it? Because it happens a lot. I would say it's actually now a bit of the opposite. The fact that there's still sort of a lot of um, injustice and power hierarchies where you just can't do, uh, do anything about it and it feels like martial law in your everyday life. Once it happens in the real political world, people are fast on it. That's why I think when people around the world might be like, well, they, they didn't even go to bed. It was 1020, 1023. You'd think that some people might sleep on it, be like, well, the president declared martial law. Maybe there is a reason for it. So why don't we, it's already 1023. Why don't we sleep on it and then, you know, decide in the morning? No, people can sniff out a serious coup the ta situation, martial law, like something that they have to respond to, Korean people, because they're primed, they can spot it, they will go out and they will do it. And but like I said, they have a favorite spot anyway, because of all the protests that they've had to uh, deal with. But what was President Yoon's justification when he did do the first announcement and the broadcast at 10.23 p.m. on Tuesday night? He said that this move was necessary to protect South Korean citizens from anti-state forces, so people who are going to threaten the country of South Korea, and pro-North Korea followers, so it is that old adage of like the, the boogeyman of the communists. And then he also accused the opposition party. So he's on the conservative, he's in the conservative party. So he's accusing his political opponents of paralyzing the government, essentially blocking all of his bills and especially now spending bills. So the budget can't go through. He's going to be paralyzed just politically, and then also impeaching key officials and obstructing his administration's agenda. And he also said that the National Assembly has become a den of criminals and drug traffickers and that he had to save the country by eradicating this anti-state force and normalize the country as soon as possible. So officially to justify the martial law implementation, he's trying to paint these forces as rebellion. But he blew up like like a living room president. You know, everybody, every every Korean dad and probably mama now is a president in their living room. And they're declaring martial law all the time. You know, pick up these toys before I declare martial law on this house. But you don't do that with the structure and institutions of an entire country with over 50 million people. You don't do such rash living room president type of decisions. Are there forces that have really gone against him and when he laid out these reasons 
Was he 100% lying? I don't think so. But these are normal, <laughs> hate to break it. I don't know nobody bro broke it to him yet. He's been president since 2022. The, what he talked about in terms of his reasons for implementing martial law are essentially part of the job. This is what it means to be the president of a country. You are always dealing with these people who are your enemies, your political enemies who are going to sabotage you. So we're still waiting to hear from President Yoon exactly from his mouth why he did this. Although we did hear initially when he implemented it, but we're now waiting to hear whether he's going to apologize or step down or if he's just going to stick to his guns. We are waiting for that while, you know, filming and editing. But if it comes during that time, I'll try to add it or make a follow up video. But when I looked at this, I was like, OK, those reasons are legitimate in terms of really weighing on himself and his heart. But it's not enough to declare martial law. And I would even think that if his own life or political future were at stake, I still think that wouldn't be enough for him to declare martial law like this. The only thing that I think is enough for him to cross that line to into crazy town to declare martial law is to save his wife. If you look at a lot of the political analysis, the little dialogue will say like, oh, he's trying to make a statement because he's been politically isolated. He's been politically deadlocked. He's been in gridlock and he has growing tensions with his opponents and his own allies within the party. And he's had numerous scandals he's had to deal with. All of that is just a very sugar-coated way to say, honey, next week, exactly one week from his Taco Tuesday martial law on December 3rd, exactly one week later on December 10th is when a serious move by the National Assembly may land his wife in jail. Let's be real. I think that's the reason why he went berserk with the hot sauce. And the reason I say this is that the actual analysts are saying this, but they have to modify or tamp down their words. But hey, here on YouTube, I could tell you exactly what they're meaning. Because they even said that he has an apparent psychological state of isolation. When people feel cornered, they tend to make absurd decisions. Now, Yes, you can feel cornered over, wow, they're not passing my budget. Oh, they are threatening to impeach key people in my administration. That is not exactly a situation of a caged animal. However, if those moves to block and paralyze his government were in an effort to bring down his wife, if the impeachment of those key officials were to clear the path for the bill on December 10th to attack his wife, that is the psychological state of a cornered man who has a life and death decision in his mind that he has to resolve. Because the way that this came out, it was just like life or death. And even as much of a political novice, President Yoon is, was coming into the job, ain't no way a budget for the government is really going to corner him where it's a life or death situation. We have had decades of pseudo North Korean aligned Korean, South Korean politicians, or just even accused and nothing there. Like that dialogue of accusing the liberal camp of having alliances with North Korea is just a tale as old as time. So, you know, sometimes people had to go to jail for it because there was a little bit too much alignment. But 
That is not a life and death situation on December 3rd, 2024 for President Yoon. Yes, you've probably seen his wife. You've probably heard of some of the scandals, particularly the whole Dior bag incident. But I know some of you are actually thinking, but don't want to say, is she actually worth a life or death decision like this to put the entire country at risk for martial law? Well... I didn't think, I, I I would never have thought, never ever would have thought he would go to such an extreme. However, we have seen how much, even in the National Assembly, some bunny uncles are willing to manipulate South Korea's laws and the institution of the National Assembly over some cookies. Now imagine if you were the bunny uncle and you made the cookie your wife. That's essentially what happened with President Yoon and his current wife. They married in 2012. They have no kids. They really are kind of two peas in a pod. He married late because he was sort of like a quote unquote failure with like not being able to pass the bar exam, but then he skyrocketed to success. He became a very prominent prosecutor known for being very principled because he followed what he thought was right, regardless of political agenda. So people didn't even know whether to ca- where to categorize him. Are you liberal? Are you conservative? He didn't really care. He was just trying to go after stuff. And then he also did have a hand in the President Pakane impeachment. He wasn't even supposed to really be president. He was manipulated by actually the liberal camp to be the conservative candidate because they thought he is so easy to beat. He has no political experience and he's sort of kind of a little bit clueless. He's going to be so easy to beat. So from even his wife's own mouth, she has said that, yeah, it was literally the liberal side who were was able to get Yoon suk yeol to be the conservative presidential candidate so that they could run their candidate and have a landslide win. What sort of happened was I believe the candidate that they were supposed to run against Yoon suk yeol got double-crossed by the biggest, biggest double-crosser on the peninsula, Lee Jae-myung, and... Yoon suk yeol narrowly won that election. So yes, the first lady has been involved in a lot of shadiness, you know, falsifying or plagiarizing her thesis, having a shady mother who actually served time in jail over real estate fraud, you know, accepting that Dior bag. But really the big thing that is sticking, and if you're gonna commit a crime that the law can actually be able to sink its teeth into, it usually involves a financial transaction because I believe there's more evidence that can be assessed. And then there's a lot of laws around financial and business transactions. So that is the thing that she's being caught up in right now and where the political opposition of Yoon suk yeol is continuing to hammer away at and making a lot of progress. It's a stock manipulation scandal. It looks like it was some sort of insider trading uh, situation. They have a lot of evidence and it's with Deutsche Motors, which is one of the major BMW distributors or uh, dealerships and service people in South Korea. And she had like a uh, sort of like a bunny uncle relationship, I guess, with the the leadership of a Deutsche Motor and mainly, I mean, she's had a lot of bunny uncles, okay? So that was kind of the thing. But even so, girls like her can dream of marrying one bunny uncle, which she did. And yes, this stock manipulation case is bad, especially when it looks like you're using or abusing power. So here at the office of the presidency to not be held accountable. So how are the walls closing in? In January, October 
and November, there were three bills that President Yoon vetoed that would have set up a special prosecution investigation and basically have more power to find the evidence and convict his wife of this stock manipulation scandal. However, he vetoed it. But it looked like after that happened, the opposition party found very clever legal maneuverings, whereas next week on December 10th, it looks kind of like a threatening situation where they may be able to, through a different mechanism, be able to install through the Supreme Court, I believe, prosecution that would investigate his wife. Now, the reason why I don't think the First Lady is a completely innocent, sacrificial lamb is that there are things that need to be investigated, whether she is influence peddling or being the conduit to an unelected power force that is installing people within the government in power. So essentially like a shadow government or, you know, like the deep state in the United States where she has these very strange ties, especially in the shaman world. Remember with the whole thing about the when they were going to move in after – be winning the election, moving into the blue house, they had plans to set up a little a little apartment for her main shaman. Okay, she that's just creepy. And then so what people don't like in in Korea, even if they might, even if they do go to shamans themselves, they don't want a shaman to be whispering in the ear of the president and then have the president make the decisions based on all of that shaman stuff because they might believe the president might believe oh this is from the spirit world guiding me but essentially it could be like the shamans is like i need to get you know brenda tony and uncle cousin and brother-in-law you know set up and basically be leeches on the government or whatever type of agenda that that group might have when you have the 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 brain of the president like that that's crazy what we're seeing here is that at least with his wife at least with his wife he's willing to go to extreme lengths for his wife like this otherwise president yoon you have the biggest explaining project to do to make it make sense of what you said on Tuesday night being that big of a justification to invoke martial law, which has never been invoked in the modern democratic history of Korea over issues that every other president has had to go through and never declare martial law to solve. So the opposition party says, President Yoon, you have 48 hours to resign or we're going to impeach you. And they've already made the filing of a motion in the National Assembly to impeach President Yoon. Do I think what he did was impeachable? I think absolutely. Absolutely, yes. You don't mess around with martial law like this. Am I sympathetic, understanding of perhaps why he did it yeah i think maybe in a storybook that would be a little bit somewhat tragically romantic but you don't mess around with people like this their lives the 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 alliances the the knock-on effects of such a move and being the boy who cried wolf now because when you say martial law you motivate everybody comes out to the yard okay and if they see that it's just over some milkshake, huh, what are they going to do the next time you cry wolf? The plot twist at the end in total K-drama fashion. Could there be a possibility that President Yoon kind of set it up this way? I actually think so. When you really look at how much he's been battered down, I think he's given up. I think he wants to sort of quit. So had his martial law succeeded, 
he would be able to shut down the nation's press, shut down the legislature that was going to move forward in jailing his wife, control public opinion so that they don't jail his wife. So had his martial law succeeded, he would have been in the driver's seat and he can control the outcome. However, he did have a presidential spokesperson say on his behalf that he anticipated that the National Assembly would vote down his martial law. And also now that we're like looking into the weeds, he didn't really mobilize the entire military. The entire military didn't even know that he was doing this. They saw it on the news. So did he just set himself up to fail like this and get impeached? I actually think that could be a possibility because if he gets impeached, most likely they will drop the charges against his wife. And therefore, each move was a sacrifice for his wife. And you better believe that New Jean's mama is probably reeling in jealousy, being like, dang, that is one big sacrifice for the first lady's cookie. And she's probably looking at her two-bit bunny uncles thinking like, what have you done for me on that level? But in any event, there should not be this type of abusive power and scaring everybody and taking away their civil liberties all over a cookie, no matter how good it may be. But we do know that this cookie has had some shaman witchcraft stuff going on with it and that is not a good way to run a country all right guys what do you think put your comments below remember to like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time Bye bye